What's up, everybody? Big Burger here. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all last night. Thanks, everybody. Thank everyone who I, I I decided to post on on my social media that hey, I got a YouTube account. You know, if y'all could get on there and subscribe like that, and y'all, I went from 25 to 52 out of 500 friends. I'm just kidding. Thanks, thanks everybody who subscribed to the channel. And today, we are working on the old Ford. Oh yeah. Um, let's, let's All right. You can see that's the old power steering pump. That's a bit of a puddle of brake, not brake part cleaner, um, carb cleaner. Clean this bad boy up as best I could with a wire wheel, and it's better than what it needs to be i need to clean that up <clears throat> you know it just looks nasty putting dirty dirty stuff back on the truck and um I'll tell you the predicament i'm in not really a predicament and i can't find that part here it is this is the water temp sensor <coughs> that goes on the back of the block can't really see it now at the intake and the exhaust manifold's on, but it goes back here, up underneath there. This part screws in to the back there. You hook the wire to this connector. And sorry, I'm all over the place. Well, apparently, AutoZone does no longer carries those. Oh, Rob Me's no longer carries those. And I will, there's another place here. It's Davidson's. I don't like going into those guys. All five of them can't. I'm done. I'm not going to be mean. So, I'm going to go with this. I know it's going to look weird. I, I hate, unless I do all the gauges, I don't like doing stock gauges and putting these gauges in. But, I mean, I guess eventually I'll put, uh, I'll redo the gauge cluster and do something of this nature. But this is what we're going to, I'll be putting, try to put this in at least the connector in the day. I want to get the motor, the motor all done and buttoned up. That's why I'm doing the power steering pump because all that's left to do is the power steering pump. I figured out my brakes. I figured out my brakes. After almost pulling off the master cylinder and taking it down and replacing it, I noticed, you know, I've never had to deal with manual brakes. This is the first truck I've had that had manual brakes. I had a 72 Mustang that had manual drums all the way around it. <coughs> and it got to disassembly and it never recovered from disassembly because of all the cancer that was in it. So it all became parts. So I never really had to mess with them. But this one, I couldn't get any, any fluid to the rear end. Brand new brake hoses, calipers, wheel cylinders, you name it, proportioning valve, other than the metal lines themselves, everything has been replaced. So, I just said the hell of it, I bled my front brakes. I bled the fronts, and there's a lot of air pushing out. I might end up doing them again, just to try to get more air out of the system. I've left, and in the process of doing that, I started, if you see down there, there's a puddle down there by my rear tire. I started getting fluid to the rear end. So I left them open and I kept pumping, trying to get fluid. So I have fluid coming out of both rear ends of the drums and I bled both the fronts, even though I was still getting air coming out of them. Like I said, I'm, I bought some more dot three, got my little down there on the ground. I got my little, I pretty much just fill that up and put it back into the mesh cylinder, trying to bleed all the air out of the system. But the pedal was hard or working properly. I won't really know anything until I get it on the ground running and testing the brakes. So, I mean, all this would be for nothing. I ain't got no brakes, but to me, brakes should be an easy fix. So, but yeah, um, update. Like I said, Dylan came over the last weekend. We put the intake manifold and exhaust manifold on. Uh, I put the alternator bracket on the alternator on the alternator bracket down there back on put the fan and the pulley on dylan put on the yeah dylan put on the water outlet and the water pump back here and the valve cover hey 
you could tell he's a true on technician because he even torqued the torqued them down to specs. I'm like, should I just tighten them down to they get tight? Restabbed the distributor, the sun's messing up my lights. Um, got a brand new oil, I don't know if you can see it, oil pressure regulator. Yeah, this wire actually right here is the one that hooks up to that water outlet back there. That's no longer in use since it's a manual line that goes to it. So, I want to get the power steering pump in today, that water pump in. I went down to the hardware store. And I found a, a block off, I don't know, a cap or whatever for this part. And I was trying to find something for this, and I couldn't find anything. But then when I investigated, I realized it just goes up here and out here. There's no other holes or anything in there. It goes to the regulator, which is, I still got it. I should still have it throw it away yeah it used to go to this it would pressurize do whatever it did and it would come back through this side and come into the block well since that is not in use if I just block off this one I ain't gotta plug it it's just a hole so I cut me some sheet metal I'm in the process of doing the power steering pump just now so I can't really mess with this just yet but when I get done with this power steering pump <clears throat> the new one in the box and everything, everything bolted up and cleaned up and put in. I'll yeah, I'll show y'all step by step. Well, not really the updates. And then we're gonna. I I would love to start getting the front end of this truck back together again. So, uh, baby girl's asleep. Mama should be home here in a little bit. She can watch baby girl. Like I said, my goal today is is to at least get the front of the truck back together to where all I gotta do is just bleed the front brakes again, put the tires on, take off jack stands, and move it out of the dang carport so I can clean up my carport because it's a dang mess. Clean all this up and um, yeah, just clean. All right. All right, y'all. Um, <clears throat> let me see, got the power steering pump on that specialty tool you put it back on you gotta clamp it around this piece I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you here in a minute I haven't hooked anything else up to it I hooked anything else up to it <coughs> I'm in the process of you know beautification well on top this is the mount that it sits on that bolts to the side of the block and then you have a silver piece oh man I should have painted it silver it's gonna look weird anyways um, silver piece of backs and it sits up there and it sits in this little rack thing and like that but the top of it is the AC as much as I would like to just I kind of want to try and see if I can get the AC in this old truck to work there's the old pump and everything I just uh, conflicted. That might be something. I'll save all that and try it for later. Now, while that's a drawing, I'm going to put in the. Let me get untangled here. The new thermostat. Or not thermostat, the temp gauge since AutoZone and Rob Means no longer sells that part. If you've never done one of these before, you have these little adapters, you figure out which one works, put it into the block, and then you slide this in there and down the ways. Mine's all the way back at the end. You have this piece. Slide that piece up, tighten it down, and you're good to go. The hardest part about this though is going to be because you can't disconnect the line. I gotta go into the cab, find a way. It needs to come in on this side. I don't want to go through the AC anything, but it's going to come in. See, my old truck that I did, I actually pulled all the heat and AC out of the truck. I pulled it all out and just put a uh, piece of sheet metal there and siliconed it in and, you know, like that. And I ran it through a hole that I made in that, made a grommet for it. But I actually went 
heat. That was one of my other mistakes with that old truck, the 84. It didn't have no heat. And here in Texas, it gets pretty cold. So, <clears throat> I'd like to have some heat and then eventually AC. Because this is all going to come out and I'm going to replace piece by piece and see what I can do about putting 134 back in this truck. Or... 134 into the truck it had used to have that old r12 so i need to find it's hard as a damn rock i could have cut all slit in that push it through that's not it that's too damn tight or excuse me too tight looks like that's what i'm gonna have to do could have slit in this right here, run it through, run it behind the block, and over there to that. All right, that's what I'm gonna start doing now while that part of there dries. Because once that's dried and put in, I actually forgot to get a hose that goes from that coolant, that cool cooling tube, to the back of the to the bottom of the um, power steering reservoir. Reservoir. Jesus. Talk. 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 <clears throat> so that's what I'm gonna do and through the magic of uh, you know editing yeah I don't have to watch it y'all can just see the finished product what's up everybody I got that sun right in my eyes <laughs> I got that line in it's all hooked up I can see that I just cut a little slit in the old body grommet I'm just gonna rig it up come up or something I should have went up over that before I did all this oh well that's what zip ties are for I guess I'll put a right mirror right mirror or something I'll figure out something for it and being used right now and I would just like to say I love the smell of old pickup trucks I really do it takes me back. Let me give you all a brief history of these trucks. Well, or why it is that I love these trucks. Yeah, plus that paint's still drying. My first truck that I learned how to drive in, the first truck that I fell in love with, was my grandfather's. My papa's. 1980 F100 Ranger with the Explorer package. And it was a white truck, had like a gold like stripe down the side, like small little pinstripe down the side. Um, it had these small ass mirrors on it, like these ones. And he put the big ones on it, but I kind of like it. I'm not trying to turn this truck into my grandfather's truck like I did the last one. That was, I could never do it because it was a standard anyways. And it was an automatic, just like this one. This one's pretty much identical to Pop's truck, except for the color. I mean identical um, but this one's gonna be what I want to do with it and um, <clears throat> if you can tell there's a bunch of junk in the bed of the truck too all right but these old he he had that truck long before I knew him he would hop in that truck I might even get stickers like I did the last one and do a memory of Pap all like I like I did on the last truck and uh, I just won't name this one. Last one I called the Kentucky Express because my grandfather would take his pickup truck and I'm getting a phone call. Sorry, my wife called me. She was on her way home and then <coughs> her sister Stella pulled up. So I was briefing her on baby girl. But I'm um, still drying. Back to my story, you know, my grandpa had I fell in love with his truck. First truck I ever drove. It was my truck for a short period of time. Um, growing up, I got my license and everything. My uh, my first truck was actually a, a a '94, yeah, '94 Ford Exploder from uh, my uncle. I bought off him for 1,500 bucks. And right before I got my, I had my learners. Right before I got my driver actual driver's license, my mother uh, went down and was going to trade in her truck, and I wanted her truck. And uh, she called me and said, hey, Bubba, if you want this truck, I, I bet, give me your truck, and we'll trade that in and get this minivan, and you can have my truck, a deal. So I drove it down there, and I drove my truck back, 
And uh, she had a 1995 Ford Ranger Splash. Remember the old Baywatch trucks? Canary yellow, extended cabs, step side, chrome wheels. Pretty truck. Yeah. Uh, I had that truck for a good, like, two years. And uh, I was driving home. Uh, I was going to my father's house for uh, um, Sunday dinner and lunch. We did that every Sunday. It was either at Granny's or at my dad's house. Um, and, uh, he, uh, well, driving, it was typical Florida day. It was, um, raining and fogging or foggy, fogging, Jesus. And, uh, come up the hill there, it was a Canadian in a minivan in front of me, uh, outside of a turning lane, trying to make a left-hand turn into the Wendy's there in Dade City, Florida. And, um, yeah, girlfriend was next to me and she was playing with her boobs. So I was concentrated on that, I guess. And. Look forward to a van that, and I'm sorry, I know I can't prove it. He didn't have no brake lights or turn signal. I know that's kind of a hard thing to prove, but I didn't see red. I thought it was blue. And um, plowed into him, wrecked that truck. So uh, that was my senior year in high school. That happened beginning of the school year. So I had my grand, I had that old 80s Ford pickup truck. My dad had it. And, um, you know, he he was his little dump truck. He used to throw brush in the back of it and drive down to the dump and dump it off. And he gave it to me, told me it was my truck, like that. And um, I drove it until I graduated high school. And two days later, I left for Fort Benning, Georgia. Gave it back to my dad. Said I'd take it when I get back. Well, I got out of basic, went to Fort Hood here in Texas. Um, it's where I, um, you know, it's where I'm currently am now well not on Fort Hood I live next to Fort Hood but not on Fort Hood um, well I went back home and I needed a car I needed something reliable something that give me back to Texas and everything so went down there the same place my mom got her minivan and I found a 2004 Dodge Neon uh, SXT it was a nice little car it was only a year old had like 40,000 miles on it. It was, it was a pretty nice little car. Well, honestly, I wish I would have just kept the old truck. I really do. Because that was pretty much the day we lost it. Dad drove it up there. They gave me money for it for a down payment for the car. Next day, one of my dad's friends went up there and bought it off them for 700 bucks. Still had the brush in the back of the truck. My dad's friend had it for a couple of years. He gave it to his boy. My dad always told him, said, hey, man, you ever feel like getting rid of it? Let me know. Well, one day he called my dad. And he said to my dad, he said, um, he said, um, Bob, damn truck's a piece of shit. Or excuse me. Oh, my God. I got to stop cussing. Truck's a piece of crap. Why that? Come, come get it. What's wrong with it? I don't want to run. Dad's infinite wisdom showed up there and starts tinkering with it. He didn't have title, he didn't have keys. He didn't like, oh, it's your truck now, Bob. Get out of my sight. No, he was like, oh, look at it. He walked over and tightened down the carburetor because those old 300 straight sixes rattle so much they loosen the carburetor. Tightens down the carburetor, truck starts right up. No issues. Oh, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. <laughs> Dad, we had one chance. One chance. <sighs> it's all right. And apparently he sold it off to somebody, and some old man in Brooksville had it, and or Trilby had it, and then he up and moved to Georgia and ain't seen it since. I would love to have my papa's old truck. But anyways, this truck smells just like my papa's old truck. All these old ones, and it looks just like it on the inside. That, that saddle, brown. I got all the paneling. I just pulled it off to clean it. It's dirty and dusty. I, gotta get, I I haven't really messed with the inside other than trying to clean up some of the dust and stuff. I got a new windshield. But uh, I did test out a cleaning thing. Because you can see that's what it looks like originally. This is where I got it. I'm actually going to end up pulling the seat out and pulling the <clears throat> carpet out and cleaning up all these panels. I might even repaint. They had that dye paint off LMC. Repaint all these. I got to get door panels. Because they're pretty bad. So, well, that's in. That part's dry. 
Let me um, put that part in, put this power steering in, and I'll start from there. Hey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> part four of a two-part episode. <laughs> um, switch you over. All right. It took me a minute because I'm an idiot, and I forgot about this piece. So I'm sitting there, I put everything together, I'm like, this, this doesn't look right. I had forgotten this piece, so I cleaned it up, painted it. Oh, well, this screw's just in here. Notice the leak. I put fluid in it, hooked everything up, put a new line in. I had some spare um, fuel hose, fuel hose line. <clears throat> hooked everything up, and this one right here from the the cooler. I guess uh, it had it was angled. I guess it was angled when I screwed it in, so it wasn't fully flushed in there. So when I went. I would turn the wheel back and forth to get all the air out of the system. <clears throat> it leaked all this out. So, I fixed that. And I've been taking my drill and hitting it with that, that head right there and spinning the... Um, I know I could do this when the truck's running. It'd probably be easier, but I'm just killing time. So, I did that. So, this is all in. And I actually stepped back. It looks pretty good wasn't trying for pretty but it looks pretty nice so uh that's done i still need to do that intake make that cut that up i got another part over there painting or being painted this place is a mess uh oh yeah yeah i've been moving back and forth with the truck so one thing's drying or whatever i put that in I just need to wire it in. The white's positive, the black's negative, and there's a little light that comes on. I gotta find a. I'm gonna turn on the light switch. Like that. Try to find one that uh, will power that when I turn on the lights. So, but I'm not ready to do anything with the interior yet. I will. If you haven't seen it, yeah. I will do something. I know I put that wrap around the steering wheel. You gotta do that. It's a thing. Other than clean that and clean off the dashboard and take the crap out of it and this door panel. But it needs the window track stuff here, it needs that. Both sides need it. These door panels, these ones are pretty much shot. I thought about sanding them down and salvaging them, but I don't know. I'll, I'll test out one. I, do, I have a good junkyard here in town, and the guy loves old Bullnose Ford, so. When I tell him that I'm working on one like last time he'll he hooks me up and lets me get stuff so and Dylan is coming over to the night and uh, I'm gonna record some more I really since that's done I'm gonna try and do the carburetor stuff get that in clean all this crap out of here I kind of want to take this out clean it because it's Got all that slung all over it from, I guess, the old power steering pump. Because this was all caked and nastiness. But I'm pretty sure I had a seal leak and it just spread and got slung everywhere. So, so yeah. Clean this up. Might get a run of the night. No, I got to get a Well, I got to take that. I got to take that stuff back. I got to take that tool and that pump back from my core and everything. So... I might get that lower radiator hose and some hose line for the heater core and put some you know, put the front end together and put antifreeze in it and see what it does. Hopefully she spires off. I'm pretty sure the fuel in it's fucking bad. Or right. ugh, excuse me, Jesus. Sorry, kids, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. I was Army Infantry and I worked for TDCJ. If you don't cuss, you don't have, yeah. So, hopefully, we get this thing on the ground and running. I can move it. <laughs> so, all right, more to come. All right, y'all. It's nine o'clock at night. I've been working on this thing since like one. Uh, I don't feel like I got a lot accomplished, but apparently I did. Let's take a look. Got the front end. Well, the core back in it. Lower support. The uh, bumper, the 
Oh my god, power steering's in. Uh, lower radiator hose. I went to AutoZone and got a new lower radiator, lower radiator hose. I got new rubber for this. Bolted up there. Um, oh man. I, like, I don't feel like I went inside and ate dinner. I had pizza for about an hour and a half, two hours. So, uh, I, like I said, I did some. <clears throat> Uh, starting to get cold too. Dylan's supposed to come over, but he, in his defense, he's in the process of buying a car, so you know it takes a minute for that. Well, this is what I was getting at. I don't know if I showed it, but this is the old EGR valve or EGR. I really wish I just sold a spacer. This deleted all this crap. Well, my infinite wisdom, I cut a piece of sheet metal to put in here, and I realized I only, I only have to plug this hole. And you see how nasty it is. The backside was just as nasty. It was actually had a nice hard building, hard carbon build up inside. I mean, hard, like I couldn't break it. So I was like, you know what? I got this whole tube of steel weld. I might as well just plug the damn holes. So I plugged that one. I had the thing. And I came in here and I set it upright. I mix, made a big mixture. Poured it in there, and it sealed. And in the process of doing this, this little breather tube decided it wanted to break off. So I patched it, too. And the reason why it's like that because I, I stood it up to do that. So it did that. So this will harden and dry. I cannot find my filter or gasket that goes from the intake manifold to this. I have the gasket that goes from this to the carburetor. But I have not been able to locate it, so and I don't have any. I don't have any um, gasket paper, and I don't like using silicone on this. Just silicone. So, all right. Well, like I said, this recap of what I did today. Oh, and I put the tires back on the front end. You can't see it, but you got the flashlight and show y'all. And uh, I got a question for my viewers out there. All right, the truck came originally with black rims. All right, the spare in the back is white. I, a while back, took this tire off and painted it. I'm going to put another coat on it, but I'm just, I was trying to figure out if I like the white or the black. I'm going to get the, the Half Moon Dog Bowl you know hubcaps because they just they're freaking cool and hopefully they fit my 84 i didn't know it but i had to cut the centers out of the hubcaps for those to fit in the fronts but uh i like the the dog dishes that's why i try to put them on so y'all let me know if y'all like the white with the with the truck you know the truck's that really weird tan or black with dog dishes so tires are on it it's still in the air I put the thermostat or the the new water temp gauge or water temp gauge piece in uh, bolted down the accelerator bolted down the accelerator accelerator I can actually move this this sits up here I can get it squeezed in there we go uh, put the new lines in here. Got the new lower radiator, whatever. Fuck. I rewired this because it was just nasty. I need to rewire that wire there too. There's actually a bunch of wire. I'm, I think I'm only wiring the last when I get the truck all done. Come through here and just replace all the connectors and you know, corroded ends. I pulled. I pulled this off because it's nasty. I'm going to take it in the house and clean it. I actually have the cap in the house soaking in hot water to get it all cleaned up so it looks nice. But yeah, the all those mounts and brackets are in there. The belts are on it. <sighs> Power steering's buttoned up. Uh, that's buttoned up. Like I said, it don't seem like I did a lot, but if you count painting and like that and then like I said this 
The radiator core in itself was a pain because you got to align everything up. Speaking of that, let me see. I don't want to close it. Ugh. A little, a little tight on this side. A little tight on each side. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so, but my parts area is clearing up. I just got to put those in. And I really just need to, yeah, put those headlights in and just clean up. I got all, I pulled all my tools out and threw them up here. But, yeah, <clears throat> I got to test out my new Christmas present, the drill. The impact drill that the wife got me. I wanted one like the impact driver that I had, but she grabbed the wrong one, but it's fine. I'm gonna start doing some woodworking so it'll help out a lot. Uh, close up shop. <sighs> I'm gonna dip, no. It's in my pocket, all right. <sighs> all right. Sneeze. All right, guys. That was one full day working on the truck. I could have gotten. <coughs> I could have gotten a lot more done, but. <coughs> but like I said, it was just mostly a, a, a day killer. I wanted to get a lot of stuff put back together, so. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god. <coughs> okay. So I'm dying. Um, thanks for watching. That's been an update. Y'all saw me working on the truck. Hopefully Dylan comes tonight and uh, we can work on it some more tomorrow. And I'm hoping he comes so we can finally open up Box Evolutions cards so we can get those out of the way. <coughs> oh, thanks for watching. Y'all take care. Y'all take it easy. Big Bird, you out. Oh, by the way, Dad, you think you're slick. You really do. I know it's you. You're the only idiot in the world who would have the same name as me. And then change it to Redneck Bergie. Yeah, good one. Bye. Oh, love you, Dad. Bye.